Yeah, all my friends that have younger, you know, younger kids, it's the same thing. They've been, you know, having to homeschool and, you know, they miss their friends and, you know, yeah. it's, it's amazing. But it definitely affects mental health, too. I mean, you know, I, I personally can say, you know, that I went through a similar thing where I, you know, it got really hard for me uh, early on uh, in COVID. Of course, I'm feeling really great now. I'm about six months sober. Um, and congrats. You know, I, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you guys. I just turned it around. You know what I mean? I turned it around. I, I had, That's awesome. You know, and, uh, and I feel better than ever because, you know, I've been really taking care of myself physically, but, um, mm -hmm. but it's tough for, for people out there. And I talk to people all the time of all different ages, whether it's, you know, teenagers or people that are their parents or, you know, friends, people that I know from the music business that are, you know, uh, you know every aspect of, of the business that say to me that they have, they have some rough days. Some days it's really rough because of that isolation. Hey, talk mm -hmm. to you guys about the record, too. Like, I mean, the, some of these songs are, are pretty incredible. And we were talking about Road Thank Recovery. You. And, and, you know, people can check it out at roadrecovery.org. It's so important because it's there for young people. And Absolutely. And their doors. It used to be like everything was in person. I, I get it. Like musicians from every walk of life would come and uh, and meet up with the artists, uh, meet up with young people there. So tell yeah, me and well, so okay. yeah, so uh, uh, on the on the note of the record, mm -hmm. um, and and to oh, and to touch on road recovery too. I mean, I think one of the reasons that we were both so so interested in this and so interested in road recovery yes. is the connection to young people. Um, and you know, our, our audience is really, you know, a lot of our audience, they're Gen Z, they're 17 to 24, they're, they're, they're on the younger side. And I feel like it's that, that has been, you know, thinking, thinking about the responsibility that we have mm -hmm. for our fans being that they are younger is, is something, it's something we think about a lot. Um, we have, I, I mentioned this to you before, we, we have um, a, a Discord server, which is like a chat room, where uh, a lot of these young people, they talk and they vent about what's going on with them. We have a, a sort of a venting channel. And the solidarity that not only that we get to show them, and that is, it's, it's incredible to see the effect that it has on people, knowing that like, oh, this band they like actually cares about what they're going through. But the solidarity that they have for each other is so touching, because they're all going through this together. And, they're, and, and that's, been, that's been incredible to see. And, and that's a big part of why we're so interested in road recovery. For, for um, those who in the Instagram that are hearing about the Discord server for the first time, like if you go there, like we encourage this kind of discussion all the time. I mean, besides yeah. the album talking about this stuff, we definitely want people yeah. to have a space to vent about this stuff and we believe that we have the space so yeah feel and we'll, to join. We'll, we'll tweet a link to our, our discord yes, yes, in yes. our in our tweet about this mm -hmm. um but yeah so as far as the album goes you know the specifics you know we can go, we can really go track by track here yeah what I, I what i want is the first song that we wrote on the album um and it is it, you know, it very much a song about depression, but in a in a targeted way. You know, it's a, it's a song about the way that people can push push others away, yeah, uh, push others away and feel like they're failing themselves. And I think you know, as as someone that has depression, a, a big a big component of it is the immobilizing nature of depression that has you judging yourself against all the lofty goals you have for yourself of the here's here's what what I want here's here's what I wish I could accomplish mm -hmm. here's what all my goals are and I'm just reaching towards there and I can't seem to get there and uh, that is it's it's such a struggle as um, an internet artist too because you don't have that kind of instant feedback yes. of playing oh a show goodness. in a rock club and the crowds enjoying it and you feel it you feel it in the moment you feel that connection whereas what we're doing you know we're spending months making this track and then we're producing the video and then it goes online and then we get to see appreciation through a screen it's 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 a totally different kind of feedback and it feels very different Ooh. We wanted, because here's the thing, because we didn't, no one expected COVID, we were really planning on doing a big show after two years of working on the album and doing the show, because the big yeah. stark difference between getting the level of interaction that we wish to have, when you get comments online, like, like for example, everyone here, everyone has a username, and everyone can say what they want, and it's beautiful to see like people responding in different ways, but because it's a username, 
you still don't get the same interaction you would have from a real fan yeah. if you were to meet them. And, I think, and that's the problem that a lot of artists online have when they work online is that they see someone online who has a username. And because it's kind of anonymous, despite the fact that you can connect to someone, they can still say something, whatever they want. And it just can, as an artist, make you feel disconnected, even though you, need to, you want to feel connected with them. Right. And a, yeah, and it, so a big, a big part of the album is that, that desire for connection, yes. which has made it... Um, Unfortunately, the events of this year have made it a lot more timely, that, that desire to be connected with people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, let's talk about some of the other songs, too. Uh, let's talk about the song Drunk, because that's a... Oh, that's absolutely. Good. Ooh, Drunk is... That's, that has had some of the most interesting responses, uh, I think, because, um, you know, obviously, there are a lot of people uh, who have you know, struggles with addiction and substance abuse who have talked to us about the song and said very nice things and shared it. But the most interesting thing to me has been the people who struggle or realize that they're struggling with mm -hmm. addictions of another form mm -hmm. who have listened to drunk and said, you know what? That's how I treat video games. That's how I treat this or that. That's, that's how I treat my uh, disorder around food. That's, you know, there are, there are a lot of people who have listened to Drunk and said, you know what, that bargaining that continues to go on throughout the song, as, as the singer says, well, just one drink, well, just two drinks, three drinks, four drinks, so on and so on. Yeah. A lot of people have connected to that bargaining to say, you know what, this isn't, this isn't just about alcohol. This is about so many things where you, there is, there is something that you're scratching an itch that you know you shouldn't be scratching and you mm -hmm. keep on making deals with yourself that I'm going to stop scratching it. I'm going to, I'm going to stop after the next one, I'm going to stop. And I think I didn't expect the universality of, of people with, with I, I, I totally didn't expect people to connect to it from a way that is outside specifically alcohol. And, and to see all the comments on YouTube, there's a lot of like sad stories of people who have went through the struggle. Yeah. And and and, and to me, like, to, first of all, I want to give a hug to every person who even shares these kind of stories because it feels like, like ah, like like we we talk about these songs and this 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 thing, especially like in drunk, from the perspective of a, like, hey, like this is something we all go through mentally. Yeah. And that by us talking about it, like we're basically allowing people to identify and say, you're not alone dealing with this. And this is hard, but you're not the only one. And hopefully the song makes you feel that this is not, this is not something to make you feel alone because you're the one struggling with totally. it. Totally. And, and in the genesis of the song, I mean, there are really two elements to it. Um, one of them is the fact that when, you know, when I was coming up as a, a teenager, early twenties in New York, um, I, you know, I went through this phase where I was out all night. I mean, every day, it, it was just, I guess it was this first period of time where I was exploring my independence and I realized I got to make my own rules and I took advantage of that at my own expense, really. Um, and, you know, I'd be out all night with a guitar and, and going to bars and, playing music. I thought I was some kind of Bob Dylan guy. And I, you know, I had this sort of image of, of what I was and this lifestyle I was conducting. And it was like, totally, totally unhealthy. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, some of it was uh, reflecting on that. Um, and, uh, you know, as well, a, a big part of it was asking myself why I engaged in those patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the chorus really comes in that, you know, it was all about that self-image I had about myself. The, it made me feel, conducting myself that way, made me temporarily feel cool and beautiful. One of my favorite lyrics Sam ever wrote was, uh, I know I'll feel ugly when, when I'll... Uh, when when I, I, yeah, I know I'll feel ugly when I feel like myself This again. is such a fantastic uh, lyric, but it's also true because... I know that even though this is more based on a lot of experiences Sam was going through, I know that when I saw the lyrics, I remember, again, like we, we go through different kinds of, it's escapism. of substance yeah. abuse and stuff like that, that allows us to think like, 
No, I don't. I don't want to deal with that life right now. I have enough traumas in my head to. No, I want. I want to drink. I just. I don't want to feel like myself right now. Yeah, yeah. I can't because the the thing that doesn't allow me to move on is not there, and I need something else to maintain it. And you know, there are so many party anthems. You know, there are so many songs that are like party all night. You know, so on, so on. Yeah. And those we had those in mind when it was like, what is the what is the flip side? Because as a as a young person, very influenced by that and culturally influenced by that, that was kind of in my self image the whole time was like, yeah, but that's that's coolness. That's like partying all night and like living fast and whatever. And we're not here to enable people to think that this is okay. We're here to say to people, drinking is part of who we are sometimes, but we need to acknowledge the fact that we're doing this because we need help. Right. You know, it's it's it, it was about that element of like it is and it is escapism yeah. and escapism means you're escaping from something exactly. and so let's let's focus on the underbelly of what you're running from for this song as it gets more and more and more exaggerated and intense mm -hmm.